it's an energy leak. So that is no different than you running around. Let's say you, you have a full meal, you exercise every week, and you are now jumping into your car, your car, you always maintain it every 3000 miles or 5000 miles, whatever your scheduled maintenance calls for, like clockwork, you oil, lube and filter, you, you make sure that you change the oil and you're like methodical about that and you get a tune up every 50,000 miles or whatever your scheduled maintenance calls for. However, even though you fill up the gas tank and let's say you're supposed to get 300 miles to the tank, but unbeknownst to you, you have an energy leak. And where is that energy leak coming from? You have a hole in your gas tank. Depending on the size of your hole, you at the beginning may not notice the energy leak. But as that energy leak grows bigger, you'll notice that, oh, instead of getting 300 miles a gallon, I'm only getting 275 miles now per tank. Wait a minute, I'm down to only 250 miles. Instead of getting full three, you're losing 50 miles a tank. Well, that's what these energy leaks that we're talking about right here. When you have anger that gets lodged in the body, that's unresolved emotion, that's like an energy leak. So now your body is continuously running that anger program, even though you're not really conscious of the anger program any longer, but it's still burning energy. And so you're wasting energy there. Same thing, if you had some sort of big altercation, let's say that you went through a breakup, you went through a massive breakup, whether it's a boyfriend, girlfriend, whether it's um, a marriage of whatever amount of years, it's a breakup. And you, it was a very um, unexpected, um, very hurtful. I don't know what break, but breakup isn't painful, but let's say it's, it's been more than six months and you can't, can't seem to move on and you have not chosen to forgive that person and to just get on with your life. You're just, or maybe you experienced the breakup and then you immediately went into denial mode. It's like, nope, I'm not gonna feel pain. I'm not gonna feel sadness. I'm not gonna feel grief. I'm not gonna cry. So you just bottled up all those emotions. And so now you've suppressed, repressed, and depressed this massive energy. And so it's, like right here. <laughs> and so it might be manifesting in digestive problems, could be. You could get have GERD, gastrointestinal reflux disease. You could have shortness of breath. Maybe you're starting to have, you know, some sort of pulmonary acting up energies because maybe for you your your lungs are, are maybe your strong is real stomach you're real strong your stomach is real strong but maybe your lungs are your weakest point it just depends on the person uh, maybe maybe your liver starting to act up so maybe you're starting to have and you're not even sure you feel a deep pain but you're not even recognizing it as a liver pain you just think it's a deep stomach pain Maybe you've been drinking, tipping the bottle a little bit, maybe having, maybe you used to only drink socially and now you find yourself either drinking beer every night or whatever, whatever kind of liquor, or maybe you're doing liquor and some sort of over-the-counter medication to calm your nerves, to lower your anxiety or nervousness, or maybe it's not over-the-counter. Maybe it's some sort of illegal drug that you're using to calm your nerves, like marijuana, any combination of things. You're doing everything but facing those emotions. Well, that energy has to go somewhere. It's gonna to continue to ricochet in your body until you resolve those emotions. So whether it's attacking your lungs, whether it's attacking your stomach, whether it's attacking your actual nervous system where maybe you're starting to get carpal tunnel syndrome or maybe you're starting to feel like the toes in your feet or maybe two of them or three of them in your feet or your hands are starting to get numb or maybe you're, you're feeling um, sciatica. I mean, it can manifest in all sorts of different ways. Maybe um, 
maybe you've now been, you know, officially diagnosed with, must, must, you know, multiple sclerosis, or, it, I mean, there's no limit to, to this. So I'm just letting you know what happens and what you can do to counteract it too. If you've ever found yourself, and this is one of the things that I learned also with Dr. Not only just Dr. Joe, but Dr. David is, yeah, Dr. David Snyder, he is the one who brought it to light where, you know, all of us have been in a circumstance where, especially those of us who, if you're really sensitive, like I was, I still am very sensitive, but I've learned to cope better now, but I was so sensitive that I had to bottle everything up. And so for years I bottled things up. Well, that doesn't go without consequence. So now you have realized, okay, I can't be ignoring all this stuff. This isn't healthy. But one of the things that your body will do, because Dr. Joe always says, thoughts are the language of the brain and emotions are the language of the body. So I'm going to repeat that again. And I'm going to decipher for you what that means. Because the first time I heard it, I was like, oh, what? What's exactly what does that mean? So thoughts are the language of the brain. So your brain is the organ that verbally, verbally interprets and vibrationally and frequency interprets every thought, feeling, action, or emotion that you've ever had, whether it's conscious or unconscious. The brain is simply the organ mechanism that is used to, to file all that away, to retrieve it, and to filter through whatever it is that you're experiencing now. So you could be, every time you get into the car, you might always be wearing dark shade glasses of, oh my gosh, I might get into a car accident if you've had multiple car accidents before, as an example. Or if you, you've had, um, if you're a serial relationship person, and let's say you've had, you know, 20, 30, 40 relationships, and they all last six months to a year and a half, but never more than that. And that means that every time you get into a relationship, you put on the sunglasses of, you know, they're dark glasses that the expiration date is six months to a year and a half. So every time you get into a relationship at the six month to a year and a half point, you either you self-sabotage, you do something, to make sure that that doesn't go beyond that six month to year and a half mark because that's what your brain has recorded and you've never bothered to unpack that energy and release it and let it go. So let's go back to the example of a breakup because that's something that I had to go through twice in the last 10 years. So what your brain does, and Dr. David Snyder talks about this, where you'll be driving and let's say you've repressed, depressed, suppressed those emotions because you don't want to deal with it. You don't want to suffer. You don't want to have pain. You don't want to have grief. You don't want to cry. You just want to bottle it up. You don't want to deal with it. You're just in denial. So what happens is that you'll be driving your car and you'll be all happy. So as far as you're concerned, you think you're having a great day and by all means you are having a great day. And so remember, thoughts are the language of the brain. Feelings are the language of the body. So your emotions, any emotion that you've had, good or bad, but the bad ones, the sad ones, the grief, the anger, the rage, the sorrow, the extreme sadness, shame, guilt, frustration, those are emotions too. Those, if you don't digest them, they get stored into your body. And you, it's going to keep on your body, will bring them up to the surface for you to deal with them. And if you don't deal with them, you press them back down. They're like, okay, well, now is not a good time. We'll have to deal with this later. So you'll be driving your car and you're happy and you're thinking, oh my gosh, today it's so awesome. I'm going to go paddle boarding. Um, you're getting together with a couple of friends and you're like, I'm going to have so much fun. And maybe you go out and you have a great time. And now you're, you're like, oh my gosh, today's been so awesome. What an awesome day. Gosh, that food we had was so fantastic. The conversation was great. Gosh, we got to do that over again. And you're driving home and now you're just in a place of satisfaction. And then all of a sudden, the thought of that breakup 
and the ugly emotions start to bubble up. It's almost like it's percolating and it's starting to bubble up. And you're like, oh no, hell no. You're like, I don't wanna deal with that now. And your body's like, wait a minute, you're relaxed now. This is the perfect time to, to bring it up. So then the thought bubbles up again. And you're like, oh no, that's an unpleasant thought. I don't want it to ruin my day. So boom, you press it down again. And then the body goes, okay, well, that didn't work. So we're gonna have to catch her when she's not driving in such a good mood. So now you get home, you do whatever it is that you have to do. You jump in bed, you do whatever your routine is. You put your head on your pillow. And now your body goes, okay, she's not thinking of anything. This is the perfect opportunity. So now your body goes, okay, let's, now's a perfect time. She's not thinking of anything. She's relaxed. She's in a neutral state. So then the thoughts and the memory of that breakup of that day and all, and maybe your body might even tremble. It doesn't necessarily have to tremble, but all the ugly emotions of that day start to surface. Maybe you even get teary eyed. Maybe you actually get a little chuckled up and you go, nope, you bottle it down again. Okay, your body is going to repeatedly with more force because you have exerted more pressure to suppress it down. Every time you suppress it down, it takes more energy for you to suppress it down. It is sucking the life out of you. It is a weight on your shoulders, but you are unconscious to the fact that you have un, I call them undigested emotions. Now, I don't know of anybody else who talks about emotions in terms of digestion, but for me, that is the most accurate word picture I knew when I was dealing with my stuff, when I have dealt, when I deal with my stuff, I see it as a digestion of emotions, just like you're digesting food, you're digesting energy. It's time to be a grown up and take responsibility for the whole of who you are and say, okay, you know what? It's bedtime now. No, there really isn't a bad time. There really isn't a good time. You know, when would now be a good time to take care of digesting this stuff to unpack this? Now, I don't want to keep carrying this. I don't want to have this energy suck. I don't want to feel drained. And this is bubbling up. That means I need to deal with it. Anytime you have an unwanted thought like that bubble up, the best time to deal with it is the moment that it bubbles up so that it doesn't keep on haunting you and surfacing its ugly little head at inopportune times. There's nothing more inconvenient when you're in the middle of a business meeting or you're in a pleasant situation and now you have that thought. It's like a nasty, smelly, it's like somebody passing gas, you know? A burp in reverse. When the gas comes out the other way, it's like, well, that's what those thoughts and those emotions are like but it's your own stuff. You need to unpack it. So the best thing to do is say, okay, and you just, you can talk to yourself. Okay, Lillian, this is the time I'm here by myself. It's time to go to bed. I'm willing to let all of this come out. I can do the ugly cry. I'm going to feel, I'm going to allow myself. I'm going to give myself permission. What would be better yet is for you to get out of bed and go to your mirror, stand, in front of your mirror, look at yourself in the eye. Look at yourself in the eye. Preferably look at your left eye. Why your left eye? Because your left eye is your personal side. Your right eye is your public side. That's the eye that deals with how you want the world to perceive you. But your left eye, that's your private personal eye. So look at, your, look at the true you in your own eyes. Look at your left eye and talk to yourself. Say, okay, right here, right now, I'm willing to deal with this right now. Let's bring it on. Let's bring all those emotions up. I'm willing to cry right now. I give myself permission to be sad. I give myself permission to be angry. I give myself permission to be fuming, pissed, um, 
livid. Yes, you didn't like, you felt betrayed, you felt slighted, you felt demeaned, you felt manipulated, you felt deceived, lied to, whatever the things are, you start to unpack them and say, that's right. And then allow yourself to feel those emotions. You're not going to die from it. Contrary to what I thought, that you could die, that you get, get so sad, that you could get so angry that you could die. No, you're not going to die from this. In fact, you're going to feel much better when you're done. And give yourself permission. Say, I give myself permission to cry. And you may have to close your eyes after you do this. It might even behoove you to sit down and do a little writing exercise and write down every, everything that you feel, everything that you thought that was unjust, that was unfair, that was very callous, that was insensitive, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is that's bothering you, just write it all out, write it all out. And then go to your kitchen and get a steel pot. If you have a fireplace, it's even better. But if not, a steel pot will do. If you have stoneware, use stoneware. And then just light that piece of paper on fire and say goodbye. Now, in my experience, the times that I've done this, it's kind of funny how energy works. Because normally, <laughs> this is weird, but normally paper, you know, you light it and it, it lights up and it burns right away. A whole sheet will go pretty quickly. But words have energy. And this energy is so, it's like a sticky tar because, and I'm only speaking from personal experience, because I chose to suppress, depress, repress those emotions for so long and I wouldn't deal with them. Just, you know, it's me writing that on the piece of paper. So I'm putting the energy of thought as I write it, as I'm writing it, I'm seeing it, as I'm seeing it, I'm feeling it. That vibration is going through my hand, through whatever writing instrument I have, whether it's a pen or a pencil or a marker. There's a lot of energy that's tied to that piece of paper. It's not just that piece of paper that's like made from wood anymore. Now it has all that vibrational energy tied to it. So it's no surprise that when I've gone to burn it, it won't burn. Maybe the edge will turn on and it'll turn off because it doesn't, that energy is so like a sticky tar, it does not want to go. So you have to keep lighting it and 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 lighting it until you finally get the whole thing to finally burn up and just turn all into ashes. Now, there's a lot of science why this happens. And I just told you how there is energy that's tied into it. And you have multiple dimensions of reality as you're writing it out because you're thinking in the past, but you're in the present. As you take it from thought form, you're seeing it. You're thinking it, you're seeing it. If you're saying it out loud, you're also hearing it. You're feeling it through the sense of your hand. And as you're writing and whether it's print or cursive makes no difference. Pen, pencil, marker makes no difference. So now it's going through the pen onto that paper. The paper is the recipient of all that energy. That energy is really, really charged, which is why it resists you burning it up. But then you burn it up and you let it go. And you might have to do this more than once. In my experience, usually once you do that, you're pretty much home free. There's a few other exercises. I have certain processes like the neuro health reset, which you can definitely use for this, but that is part of your taking ownership of those feelings and saying, you know what? I am not going to let the bullet make no mistakes. Any of you who know anything about guns, you know, there are, there are certain bullets that if you shoot through flesh, it'll go straight through. There is a type of bullet like a hollow point. If you shoot someone with a hollow point, it'll go in small through, through the front and in the back, it'll leave a big hole, heaven forbid. And then there's another type of bullet that when you shoot it, it doesn't go through. It doesn't make a hole through the back. It bounces inside the body and it destroys everything. 
which is fatal. And that's what our emotions are like. It's like one of those, you can think of it as multiple energy bullets that are just ricocheting inside of you. They're waiting for you to calm down and re receive it when it bubbles up again for you to deal with your impending shift. It wants, the body wants to let go of that energy and the brain would be fine with putting that in the past. The brain is just going to do whatever your conscious mind tells it to do. And if not, it's just going to go on default programming. That's what all this, this information about breaking the habit of becoming yourself. This is all about self mastery. So you have to learn to master your own emotions. And I guess we could argue that being able to bottle up your emotions in the face of adversity, in the face of a very unwanted situation is a certain level of self mastery because you didn't allow yourself to just explode or to just get angry in that moment. You just bottle that emotion up, but you know what? You can't just end the self mastery there. Self true self mastery doesn't let that garbage, you know, I don't know about you, but if I were to keep all the trash that I create in my home and never take it out to the dumpster and let the rubbish can company take it away, eventually I would have so much trash inside my house that it would stink. And that's what happens in our bodies, but we're so ignorant. We don't know this oftentimes. In some families, they're pretty good about teaching and conditioning the kids to deal with whatever stuff as it comes up. But in, in other families, we don't have the best emotional hygiene. And we're taught to repress, suppress. And the thing is, it's like a huge weight, but it's causing all this damage inside of our body. Now, once we are aware, like right now, the person who's looking at this video right now over this camera, you're being put on notice. There's a reason. This is, you've been asking, you've been praying, seeking, and guess what? You're finding. This is one of the answers. This is one of the secrets to, to owning your power, to stepping into your truth, stepping into your power, because you are going to recapture all this energy that's been bouncing, ricocheting, causing all this damage inside of your body. Ultimately, it's going to cause a tremendous amount of disease. So the sooner you take all that garbage and say, out, this is no longer in my present. This is now part of my past. You can even command your brain to keep the lessons so that now those are jewels that you can throw them into your crown. And now that is wisdom. You will recognize certain patterns the next time so that you avoid ever doing that mistake or entering, entering into a situation that looks, feels, and sounds like that. That is not a good familiar place to go to. You want to go to a healthy familiar place, not an unhealthy familiar place. So let's move on in the book. I, um, I felt that that was really important. For me, it was a game changer, and I hope that um, it is for you too. Your immune system, oh, that's the other thing. This stuff can also wreak havoc on your immune system. It can just deplete it because, again, it's sucking the life force energy out of you. It really is a tremendous energy suck.